In the lush and vibrant lands of the Creeks tribe, there is a rich history woven through time, telling the tales of remarkable women who have played integral roles in shaping their community. The story begins with the Creeks tribe living harmoniously in their ancestral lands. During this era, women were highly regarded for their wisdom and strength, serving as influential leaders and decision makers within their tribes. They were known for their resilience, resourcefulness, and unwavering dedication to preserving their traditions. As time passed, external forces began to encroach upon the Creeks' territory. Settlers arrived with dreams of colonization, disrupting the balance that had been established for centuries. Despite facing numerous challenges and injustices at the hands of these newcomers, the women of the Creeks tribe showed great courage and resilience. Hi guys welcome back to White History. Today we will look at the sex lives of the Creeks Indians. Relax and enjoy the video. Who are the Creeks Indians? The Creek Indians were a confederation of tribes that belonged primarily to the Muscogean linguistic group, which also included the Choctaws and Chickasaws. The Muscogees were the dominant tribe of the confederacy, but all members eventually came to be known collectively as Creek Indians. Most of the Creeks descended from groups living in six towns, Cusseta, Coweta, Areca, Kusa, Hoythal Wall, and Tuckabachi, all within the confines of the future Alabama and Georgia. These groups most probably formed the Confederacy. Later, the Creeks established the practice of adopting conquered tribes and accepting bands fleeing from English, French, and Spanish attacks. By these methods the Alabama, Cushata, Hitchati, Tuskegee, and Natchez Indians eventually became Creeks. The Creek Confederacy inhabited a large portion of what later became Alabama and Georgia. They, like other Muscogean tribes, apparently migrated to that region from the west in prehistoric times. The Confederacy was divided into two districts, the Upper Creeks, centered on the Coosa and Tallapoosa rivers, and the Lower Creeks, residing near the Flint and Chattahoochee. In early historic times, the Creek population was variously estimated at 11,000 to 24,000, distributed among 50 to 80 towns and outlying villages. The Creeks divided their towns into White, Peace, or Red, War, classifications. White towns hosted councils for concluding peace, adopted conquered tribes, and enacted most laws and regulations for internal affairs. Red towns declared war, planned military expeditions, and held diplomatic councils. Although members of white clans were associated with peace, they were expected to fight during wars. Indeed, advancement in civil rank was largely dependent upon military achievement. The entire Creek population was divided into clans that cut across towns and families alike. Members of a particular clan were considered close relatives even though they might have never seen each other before. Clan members had unlimited claims on each other's services. Because of the perceived kinship of clan members, marriage within a clan was strictly forbidden. Clans varied in size and stature. The Wind Clan, for example, had members in all of the towns of the Confederacy and enjoyed special privileges as an aristocratic caste marriage and family. The Creeks traditionally prohibited marriage within one's own clan or fratry and one's father's clan. Parents or clan elders normally arranged first and sometimes subsequent marriages, giving their children only the right of refusal. Older individuals might exercise greater choice of mates. Little ceremony, other than nominal gift exchange, marked marriage. Newlyweds typically lived with the wife's parents for the first year or two, after which a separate house was constructed nearby. Adultery was severely punished and women could be beaten and have their hair and ears or noses cropped and men could be beaten senseless by their wives' female relatives. At the death of a spouse, the survivor entered a period of mourning during which he or she remained largely secluded and unkempt, cared for by the deceased's female relatives. This period lasted four months for men and four years for women, though the deceased spouse's female relatives could shorten that period. At the end of the mourning period the clan of the deceased was expected to provide a replacement spouse, 
who could be refused by either men or women. Divorce was common and could be initiated by either party. Men became free immediately, but women had to wait until the next green corn ceremony. No stigma was attached to divorced persons, except in cases of adultery. These practices continued into the early 20th century, but were subsequently abandoned, though a preference for matrilocality still exists among social conservatives. Domestic Unit Traditionally Creeks lived in nuclear family houses comprising two to four buildings around an interior courtyard. Houses were arranged in matrilocal extended family clusters and clan wards. Each household was economically independent, though some labor pooling and resource sharing existed within the extended family and clan. During the 20th century the economic and social conditions produced trends toward dispersed nuclear family households. Some extended family clusters characterize more conservative rural communities and three-generational families are common, owing to poverty and the prevalence of single mothers since the late 20th century. Inheritance Aboriginally inheritance passed from mother to daughter and mother's brother to sister's son. Though fathers could bequeath some limited property to their own children by public declaration, during the 19th century, the Creek Nation permitted general patrilineal inheritance, but required public testament. Matrilineal inheritance remained the default rule until the 20th century and the conflicting rules provided a major source of legal disputes. Since 1907, Oklahoma statutes governing intestate inheritance have prevailed, though there is some tendency to ultimogeniture in actual practice. Socialization Aboriginally mothers had primary responsibility for socializing children, aided by their brothers and clan elders. These latter also supervised the education of boys from about five or six. Socialization was and is generally permissive, with ridicule and ostracism used to discipline the children. Clan uncles punished more severe or repeated infractions by scratching the arms or legs with a gar tooth or sewing needle. Since the 1930s, fathers have assumed a more active role in socializing children along with other trends toward Euro-American practices. Maternal uncles often retain an active interest in socially conservative families. Economy. Subsistence. The Creeks were farmers raising maize, beans, squashes, and other crops by intensively farming the river levees, supplemented by hunting, fishing, and gathering. Several varieties of each of the major crops were raised. The creeks maintained an in-field, out-field system, with small garden plots near the houses and large town fields some distance away along the river levees. The women of each household individually farmed their in-fields. The town fields, which contained individual plots for each household, were worked by communally organized work gangs of men under the command of the town chief. The chief game animals were the white-tailed deer, raccoons, and turkeys. Men hunted primarily during the late fall and winter, October to March, with both communal drives and smaller parties. Men often left the villages for weeks or months at this time. Meat from these hunts was dried and smoked for future use. Men only hunted close to the villages during the agricultural season. Commercial Activities during the 18th century, the Creeks adopted cattle, horses, hogs, and chickens from the Europeans, along with a number of vegetable and fruit crops. They also became heavily involved in the European deerskin trade at this time and grew increasingly dependent on European manufactures, particularly edged tools, cloth, and firearms. The trade collapsed at the end of the 18th century and some Creeks shifted to selling cattle and working in intensive, commercial agriculture. Thanks for watching, do like, subscribe, and leave a comment in the comment section.